raising the dead back to life. He did it for Lazarus. He did it for this young man. And you know, it must have reminded him when he saw the, the, the coffin and, 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 and the widow there. It must have reminded him of his own mother uh, at Calvary uh, taking down his body. Uh, wonder what happened to him. Poor Mary was a widow, and, and her son, her son died. Must be what he moves. He begins with pity. He had pity on her, and pity means you you feel for somebody. You feel sorry for somebody. You kind of have pity on them. The poor soul, the pity. But then it moves from pity to sympathy, and, and sympathy is more than feeling sorry for somebody. But you kind of feel with them. You feel. And in, in the Spanish language, if someone is simpatico, oh boy, they're, they're in your corner. They understand you. They support you. They care about you. They feel as you feel. Simpatico. But then it goes deeper than sympathy into compassion. And compassion means that you share in a person's suffering. You actually share in their pain. And, you know, I think a very good description of God revealed by Jesus, his son, is love, but suffering love. That God loves us so much, he has compassion, he shares in our pain, in our suffering, but he also suffers for us. Compassion. So this is what God is like. God is more than pity and sympathy. God is compassion. And compassion means you do something. You act. Uh, remember Mary, when, when the young couple at Cana ran out of wine, she had compassion. She did something. She wasn't going to let this couple be embarrassed and change, have her son change the water uh, into, into wine. And then the people, when the young man came back to life, they were, it said, fear seized them all. Fear. We have to be so careful in the English language. As you read that, as you hear that, it sounds like they're now afraid of God. Like God is going to punish us or something. No. Uh, a, a much better translation in English is holy fear of the Lord, the word awe, to be in awe. Wow, we're just overwhelmed by the goodness of God, by the greatness of God, by the power of God, by the majesty of God. We are in awe. He just brought this young man back to life. Holy fear of the Lord to be in awe. I think we are. We're in awe of God. We're just in awe. God is just so marvelous. But you know, um, I want to talk to you about um, this compassion of God bringing the priesthood back to life. That, that is what we need. That is what the church needs. We have the people, and we need, we need more clergy. We really need more priests and, and, uh, uh, and more deacons. And Father Dick keeps telling me this, and I think it's true. Uh, you know, when we talk about uh, priesthood, we're always looking for young vocations, and that's great. But Father Dick keeps saying, remember, the original apostles were second career people like me. And they were. Most of them were fishermen, and they had one career, and then they became uh, apostles. So when we're talking about vocations, we mean young, middle-aged, older people. Uh, Father Dick was ordained at 62 years old. See? So uh, it's never too late. It's never too late. But the, the good news is that two weeks ago, uh, Bishop Labashi ordained two young men uh, as deacons, uh, David Harris and Matthew Schultz. And, and so both of them, God willing, a year from now will be ordained as priests. So we'll have two young priests. And yesterday, uh, uh, the bishop ordained uh, Michael Sartori, 
as a priest. So we have a brand new priest in New Hampshire. But I cannot make it any clearer than I'm saying it now. We need priests desperately. We really need vocations, young, middle-aged, older. It doesn't matter. We need people who will uh, respond to this, to this great call. The diaconate. Right now, uh, Rick Hilton and his wife Linda are on a weekend retreat with the other deacon candidates and their wives. It's a time of prayer. It's a time of sharing, of reflection. And next weekend, he will be ordained an acolyte, which is a step toward the diaconate. And he's going to be speaking with us next week at the Mass is bringing us up to date. But, you know, there's such good news, and they're so talented. Second career. They're both second career. And giving their rest of their lives now to, to the church. So uh, it's so important that we get to know them, support them, uh, pray, pray for them. And, and Linda goes to every class with her husband. Isn't that great? Takes all the exams. She's actually the best student in the class. Yeah, she really is. So, but it's exciting to see to see all of this happening, and I can't wait uh, for, for Rick to be ordained because, look, deacons can baptize children. They can baptize adults. They can officiate at weddings right here. They can have funeral services right here without a mass. They can have wake services. They can bury the dead. They can preach. They can teach. They can bless rosaries and medals. There's so much they can do and just give witness by their very lives. But being a deacon is part of the sacrament of holy orders. It's a sacrament. So I'm, I really can't wait. Now, I have some very good news. In July, we're getting another deacon. We're getting another deacon. Uh, once again, second career. Uh, but this is a gentleman. Uh, who, who uh, is a deacon in the Archdiocese of Boston, and uh, his name is Charlie Ferraro. He goes by Charlie. Charles Ferraro. His wife is Nancy, and uh, she's just getting ready to retire as a school teacher. And when she does, see, they have a, a house in Massachusetts and a house here, and now they can't keep both. Which would you keep? Which would you keep? They, they decided to come here with us. Now, that's going to tell you something right away about... The, the, so they're going to be... So they'll be here with us in July, right? And in the wintertime, they do go to Florida. So he'll be here like six months a year. But um, you, you, uh, you would have had a wonderful... Last July, see, Nancy and Charlie's daughter, is, she's a medical doctor. And last July... She got married right here to another medical doctor. And the church was filled with all these doctors and nurses and administrators. I never felt so healthy. Uh, and, and, but this was, uh, so here's Charlie now, the father of the bride. He's coming down the aisle with his black tux. He escorts his daughter down the aisle, gives her to her husband, and then he goes, please. And i got to keep the people busy. Welcome to St. Catherine of Russia. He's out there like Superman, changing from the tuxedo into his owl and deacon stole. And he comes out, and he's the deacon, and he officiated at his daughter's wedding. Right here. Isn't that exciting? It really is exciting. So they, they, they're looking forward to being with us. Now, the other thing is, Charlie, this is purely a coincidence. Charlie is a very good golfer. Now just, it's just, I just, this is just God's will. It's just God's will. So I really think he has everything going for him. Uh, yeah. So you'll, you'll be meeting him in, 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 in uh, July. And I just think with, with, with Deacon Rick and Deacon Charlie, that is going to be so good and so healthy for us here at St. Catherine Breakfast. So there's plenty for them to do, and we're going to just put them to work, and I'm going to be on the first team. <laughs> All right.